the one of those to you. Get it? It's hairy. It's beautiful. You feeling it? Oh my god, it's fucking Friday. And some of you have waited two goddamn weeks for this majesty to fall upon you. What's happening, everybody? Love to see all you guys right here, right now. Good god almighty. Where was I? Well, we did do a drama two weeks ago. We did. It was at the web show. And uh, the VOD went somewhere. We did talk about Twitch and uh, I'm not saying it was that. In fact, I don't know why the VOD went away. I really don't. Uh, but it did. And there's only like two people have access to it. Did you do it, Andy? Nope. That kind of narrows it down. Uh, so there you go. Uh, so that's one of those things. But last Friday, I was in that Portugal. That Portugal with a guild meeting. Meeting all the people from Stark. Well, a good 30 or so. Uh, and uh, fresh people from Portugal who will be nicknamed The Cheese. Uh, the cheesy man from Portugal. I got to go over there and spend time with people from Stark, which is awesome. I recommend to anybody to, if you have a guild meet, don't make it one of those pie in the sky things, right? We should all meet up. Yeah, we should. And nobody does. Don't do that. Go! Doesn't matter how socially anxious you might be. Go and be with your friends that you play with like five, six, seven times a week. Go and do that. So I went over to Portugal. I took my lovely wife and was there for a couple of days. Had a load of beer, went into the town, saw some really weird stuff, and I have some cool stuff to show you at the web show tomorrow. Web show is tomorrow, and I brought some things that I want to show you guys that some people don't even know about yet. <laughs> so it's going to be good. Oh, don't give me the feels bad man on Friends. Don't do that. Don't do that at all. So yes, you did miss out on some drama, and today we're going to make up for it. Because as you can imagine, when there's like a backlog of drama stuff then uh, my email starts to figure it uh, starts to lose its mind a little bit as i did show on the stream uh which has been awesome also i do want to point out is we played a game this week which might surprise the dicks off you all you for jj's whichever you prefer called little nightmares video went up yesterday uh on friday for that one check that out even if you don't watch mates watts and you're only interested in world of warcraft just check out little nightmares because that game is fucking baller but of course, with today, we've been playing Prey, which is awesome. But anyway, I've kept you waiting for two weeks for some of you. Let's have some fucking fun. Let's have some fun. Okay. I think we'll start off with a bang. <laughs> yeah, it was a maze balls. For those in the stream who actually watched us play this game kind of randomly, uh, yes, it was fantastic. <laughs> it was absolutely awesome. So, let's... <laughs> Do you like the title? <laughs> Do you like the title? I like the title. I think it's pretty good. I think it's pretty goddamn good. Right, I need someone to be a mummy. Uh, Lyrica. Sorry, Lyrica. <laughs> Sorry, Lyrica. Is that a T? It is. This fucking keyboard is the worst, man. Lyrica. My beautiful Patreon people who are keeping us alive in this time of nightmarish YouTube disasters is the worst wyvern you're gonna be a shaman our dk is gonna be max and dale max and dale max and dale uh our mage will be only yagen i hope i'm saying your name correctly and <laughs> our druid shall be scumbag car there we go are we good we're in with four names excellent max and oh it's max and dale not max and dake let me fix that Give them the respect they deserve. There we go. Max and Dale. Cool as screw the tube. Screw it. It's all about that Twitch these days, mate. Got to get your Twitch on the go. All right, then. <laughs> Are you ready? Two weeks you've waited. Here we go. Oh, a preacher and that smexy bastard known as Ghost. Sir. Hello to you, sir. I'm writing to you about an experience I have just had the misfortune to partake in over the last few weeks. Now, a small backstory on how I ended up in this situation. Out of the kindness, the kindness of my own heart, I might add. I was being charitable, friends. I was being friends. On my main, I recently achieved that sexy achievement of cutting edge ghoul Dan. With this came a buttload of free time, as we now just re-clear on the Wednesday. Thank the Lord. <sighs> Mythic though, mate. Or oh, like normal and that. I don't know, mate. I don't know. Now, if we go even further back to when I was just a tiny little noob who just started playing World of Warcraft back in the day, 
I was introduced to the game by none other than my own mummy. Aww. Aww. I was always a gamer at heart because of my mummy. My earliest memory is myself sitting there watching mummy play that sweet game known as Smash Bros on the 64. <laughs> Anybody can relate to watching your mum wreck Smash? Anybody? Nobody? Okay. Anyway, when Mummy introduced me to WoW, I was hooked. I was hooked. She played a Resto Druid. Yes. Yes. And I chose a male Tauren Hunter. Retard. What? Why? Why did you choose a male Tauren Hunter? <laughs> Why did you do that? You could have been an Orc. Troll. Male Tauren Hunter, huh? <coughs> sure. <clears throat> I played with like six male Tauren Hunters back in vanilla. <laughs> it always made me laugh. I realized the error of my choices these days. But back then, I just saw a giant bull man and thought, this is the coolest. Anyway, over the next few expansions, we both leveled on a shared account. She switched over to a female Jedi priest in TBC because, you know, she's a girl apparently. And the circle of life must stay complete. Eventually, she bought me my own account in Cataclysm. And with my monthly allowance, I paid for my own subscription. Mum pays his allowance, he pays for wow. That's some conniving mothery goosery. That's what that is. That is some bamboozlement on that part. I bet your allowance was exactly the WoW subscription. Like, and probably like a Cola Pops or something like that to go with it. She pays your allowance, you pay for WoW with it. <laughs> Will you pay for my WoW account, Mum? No. I give you an allowance though. So you deal with that. You deal with that. I was well chuffed, but in hindsight, it was still my parents paying for my account. <laughs> and this is where I created my Warg and Warrior. Which I eventually changed back to Tauren. And this is the one that I defeated Gul'dan with. Now being the off tank of a successful raiding guild. Whereas Mummy never really got into top end raiding. And is raiding in a guild that are still at the, t oh, at the time were 7 out of 10 normal Nighthold. Starbro normal? Sure, I can see that. <laughs> this, though, is where I come in. This is the moment where I come in. With my newfound free time, I thought I would be a really nice guy. And go and help my mum out in her guild's raid. Aww. Oh, botanist? Maybe. Yeah, botanist is the step up. I'm going to help out my mum's guild. See if I could help them anyway. I transferred one of my alts over to the Alliance, my Shadow Priest, that I had never PvE'd as she was just my PvP character. Now, Preacher, I must warn you, there is raiding at a casual level, right? That's fine. Every now and again, we get a raid together, you know? We don't take it too serious and all that. That's all right, man. Not everybody's trying to kill everything in the game. But then there's this guild. They had a raid schedule. They would raid two days a week, but no raid would last longer than 150 minutes, right? Not a minute over. We will not pull a five minute boss if there's four minutes left on that timer. It ain't fucking happening, right? 150 minutes, two and a half hours, right? That's it. No more, no less. I attended the first raid. Most of the time, the raid did not get there till 30 minutes after raid time. And of course, we had to wait for those members. As it was told by the raid leader that we are a guild and everybody must be together before we start. Scorper on trash. Must be prepared for, right? If, if we do not have everybody here, I am not facing those scorpions with a man down. There ain't no way, right? Because that 
That'll fuck you up. Now, another thing about this guild is that there were no requirements to come at all. On my first raid, there was an 830 hunter in the raid. Because it's social guild, social raid. This was an actual phrase that our shaman GM, Wyvern, would say often when I brought up some obvious problems. Social guild, social raid, right? Stick it in your minds. That's the mindset. It's a social guild, social raid. Their preferred loot choice was personal loot, so we could all avoid drama. Now, my mummy, Lyrica, warned me time and time again not to be elitist while I was in the raid. And I reassured her. I said, Mama, I would do nothing out of order because I just want to come along and help as much as I can. You can trust me, Mama. Mainly Wyvern was the stubborn one. He did not like change at all. At one point, I suggested the idea of logs to my mummy, who was an officer. The other officers, a DK by the name of Maxendale and Wyvern, <coughs> were okay with the idea. Oh, no. <laughs> Maxendale was okay with the idea. Wyvern, though, was not okay. He said logs were what the hardcore and the elitist use and had no place in a social guild with social rating. I simply had to explain how it was just so we could see what maybe what was going wrong. Also, it would give people an opportunity to check themselves against other people. Maybe they could get some nice rankings. Maybe they could improve if they wanted to. After a lot of convincing and nice words from my mummy. Logs were allowed. But Wyvern was the only one allowed to log the raid. This was done under the understanding that he could control the logs whenever he wanted. We have to control the logs. The spread of information must be controlled, right? It's important. I had no problem with it. I just wanted to have someone logging so we could... You know, check yourself. It's the fun part of raiding is seeing how I did. We could also see if there were problems with the raid, to which there were obviously some. I actually managed to improve some of the raiders. Some of them increasing from grey passes to blue, even purple. Even Wyvern managed to improve after I sat down with him for ages and explained about Earthshock and things like that. <laughs> do you know what Earthshock is? I do not. Do explain. <laughs> well... Guess what? <laughs> we even managed to explain some talent choices for him when he had to heal with some help from my resto shaman friend. I guided them to your own video on how to read logs, which helped a lot of them understand that they were actually looking at. And with all that in combination, we killed Gul'dan normal. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, is this Eastern Germany? Why are you ramming your elitism down my throat, man? Fuck you. But well, Gul'dan normals now, boys. Progress. We're fucking getting there, yeah? Hooray! Heroic Scorpion on the menu. Everyone was so happy. However, I wanted to suggest a few changes of, to them to go into heroic. You said you wouldn't. You promised. You said you wouldn't. You've already come in with your fucking hardcore login. And now you're going to make some suggestions? First of all, there were some members, such as Ollie and Scumbag Car, who were, let's say, to be nice, underperformers, right? That's all. Just underperforming a little bit. It was lucky that Scumbag would ever break 150k DPS. <coughs> she said that her low DPS was usually because she liked to talk on the phone during raiding. Ollie was just stubborn 
and bad. <laughs> There's no help at all. At least, at least Scumbag could get better if she put the phone down. But no, no, Ollie's just bad though. The worst of it all, Preacher, is that Ollie was arcane. And my significant other is also arcane and is willing to help Ollie. But Ollie refused and demanded that he liked to play the game his own way. Right? Not the way you want him to play it, motherfucker. Do you pay my subscription? Do you, mate? No, you don't, mate. I don't need things like arcane power or mana. You know what I mean, mate? So why don't you show up, fucking elitist, mate? Do it my own way, new mater. This would mean that he wouldn't check anything. Stack the worst stats for his class. He was one of the people who eventually started disliking me because of my elitist ways, as he called it. Which included, and I quote from him. From him, the things that would make you an elitist. Right, so you can do a checklist now. I'm going to read you a checklist. If you fall into this car uh, categories, all of them, you have to tick all the boxes. I want to get a hell yeah from you, right? So you can figure out whether you're an elitist or not. Now we've all got a proper checklist. All right. <coughs> The definition of elitist is, one, telling people to start clearing trash after a boss died and not waiting until after loot is finished. They're talking about trading loot, right? Personal loot. That's number one. Number two, pre-potting before pulling. That's number two. If you do that, you're a fucking nerd. Get out. Three, Suggesting the idea that we use master loot on bosses that drop tier tokens so we are guaranteed that somebody gets something. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> four. <laughs> four. There's five of these. Four. Ruining their fun. An example he gave me <clears throat> was when Ollie placed a portal on top of a feast, which meant that somebody would accidentally click on it, porting them to God knows where. This caused the problem as the raid didn't have a warlock and we were facing Trilliax. This meant that we had to run out to summon the person. <laughs> Apparently me telling him not to do that, it, do that as it wastes raid time when they have very little as is was elitist and not allowed. <laughs> Number four. All right. Number five. <laughs> Number five. <laughs> that's pretty fu that's not funny that ain't funny at all you, you guys need a zarathos in your raid man and the tabooist of all crimes this is the one if you meet number five and you tick number five's box then essentially you're definitely an elitist it doesn't matter if you did all you ignore all the other stuff the tabooist of all crimes to have a gear requirement to be invited for the raids at heroic as I brought up that maybe 8.30 was too low for pro heroic progress. The tabooist of all crimes. Do not inspect anybody. Alright, anybody an elitist? Five check. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You're all elitist. Welcome to my world. You elitist pricks. You're all elitist. <laughs> Good times. But as always, Wyvern stated, social guild, social raid mate. It was obvious at this point that I wasn't that liked amongst this guild, even though I was just trying to help. But my elitist ways, which became the most common thing I heard, were causing issues with certain members of the guild. However, with a lot of bit tongs by myself and determination by the guild, we managed to clear the first three bosses in heroics over the next three weeks. Fucking get in there, boys. Yeah? Spellblade up next. Sliding it in. Most of those three weeks were, t were spent teaching people to get cakes. And going through logs when they said they got cakes to prove that they hadn't got cakes. As you can imagine, the beam on Trilliax was, <laughs> was one deadly son of a bitch. <laughs> but hey, we've all died to it at some point. <laughs> I've survived this. I'm not stopping my cast. But no matter to them, this was an awesome achievement and well played. Jokes aside, that's a good thing, man. That's a good thing. And I wasn't going to be the one to shit on their day. However, 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 however. We know, if you've raided, that these are considered the free and easy bosses. 
And this is where those problems that I was forced to ignore started to become very apparent to everyone. But I was unable to do much. We decided to skip Spellblade Heroic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we were going to go to Croesus first. <laughs> I knew, though, that we did not have the DPS. But Wyvern said, if this is what the Mythic Guilds do, it would make sense for us to do it in Heroic. <laughs> Our average raid member was under 250k DPS. And I sent Mummy a gentle whisper, stating that people like Ollie and Scumbag might need to sit out, because they're going to make the raid impossible. This was a bad idea. <laughs> this was a bad idea. She said this to the officers. <clears throat> and Wyvern lost his fucking mind. It went against the mantra of the guild. Social guild. Social raid. We have an everyone is welcome policy. This was added on to his current bad mood of me re-suggesting that we change the loot to Master Looter on Triliax for the tokens. So here we went. Let me, let's get into it, right? Let's get into it. We've all been there. Everyone watching this right now has been there, right? We're stood in front of Croesus. We're standing there. Some raid members have less than 2 million HP. It was going to be good. It went as well as you can imagine, guys. Wipe after wipe. I went to the logs to check what was going on. Half the raid don't pre-pot. Some of them said they couldn't afford it or afford flasks, that matter. Healers didn't communicate their cooldowns, so they would all be used on the first orbs. <laughs> Most often, though, orbs were blown up in the raid because people couldn't turn around fast enough to get out of the raid and people started to take swimming lessons to achieve gold at the upcoming 2020 Olympics. We're good. It was safe to say at this point I was getting frustrated. I held my tongue though as I knew these were my mummy's friends. I didn't want to snap them, snap at them, but did I feel like pressing down that push to talk key and yelling as loud as I could? I calmly suggested that some people don't really have the DPS for this DPS check boss. And maybe it would be better if they weren't here. Dead silence. That is all there was for 30 seconds. They probably couldn't believe what I had said. Mummies covered their children's ears and people began to pray to Aaron Jesus as I had just blasphemed against the entire mantra of our guild. After a while, Wyvern spoke up. And said, we don't do that here. This is a social guild with social raiding. I couldn't believe what I was hearing. It was obvious to everyone that 100k DPS just wasn't going to cut it. I mean, they were dying to just passive damage that the raid was taking. I just simply shut up for a few more tries... Until the break in which the raid was telling jokes and that's when Ollie decided it was time to turn up his comedic talent with this witty one-liner. Hey. Hey, Ravenous Hydra. Why do all serious raiders smell? is because they're full of shit. <laughs> fucking Bance Master Ollie! The Arcane Mage of Justice fucking rocks it! Oh man! Stitches! Stitches! Burned! I just sat there, tired and annoyed. I spent the last few weeks helping them out, sitting through wipe after wipe just to help. I just felt like I was just so utterly wasted. 
it was obvious to me that I was not wanted here at all. This was not my place. This was not my raiding. This is where I did not belong. I just hit the push to talk and said, fuck you, Ollie. Fuck this shit, I'm out. Have fun on Croesus for the next two months. <laughs> Peace. I'm done. I left the team speak, guild and raid, whispered my mum a short apology about how I was done. I tried and no more. I got a server transfer and ch faction changed and then began to write my story. I'm transferring back to my main server as my guild has set up an RBG team, mate! On one of our free raid days. I'm fancy getting back into some PvP on my priest, mate! Thanks for reading my little story and I wish you all to never step foot into that raid. Oh, you tried though! You shouldn't have tried. That was your first mistake. Trying. Don't do that, mate. Don't do that. Don't do it. <laughs> Just fuck this shit I'm out. I'm done. Alright. <coughs> what an elitist. He was elitist prick. <coughs> elitist prick. Right. Uh, I'll keep L Lyrica in and Scumbag Car. Because we didn't really use those names that much. Mummy was better than Lyrica. Mummy made more sense. Mummy! But Ollie got in there because Ollie dropped that Bance bomb. Dropping Bance like it's his job. Right. Lyrica will be taking on the title. Uh, oh, we need one guild name, live chat. One guild name if you guys could step up. So, Lyrica, you will be a basic bitch GM. <laughs> Worth it. Scumbag will be a, a man who admits to wearing Crocs. <laughs> It's actually a really good description. <laughs> and Crown Royal. Crown Royal is our man. <coughs> uh, the Elitist Mothers. Yes, the Elitist Mothers will do nicely. Let me put it there so I don't forget. I always forget the guild name. Elitist Mothers. All right, then. <sighs> Okay. Here we go. This is a story of a night. This is a story of a night hold raid that I did recently. I don't remember if it was normal or heroic. I'm not sure. It won't make much difference. But knowing your audience, let's just say it was normal for immersion's sake. He cares about you guys. He cares, right? About your immersion into the RP. Night hold normal. <clears throat> As healing was not too hard. <laughs> and no one got one shot by lasers or managed to stand in swirls. And nobody took too much damage, right? <clears throat> no, I don't. I have to do anything because she's here. Get out. I am a human holy poly rocking 907 item level me with 7 out of 10 mythic progress me. <clears throat> Starting on Starbro this week, which is going to be fun. Ah, he's easy now. You'll be all right. I've been stuck in guilds where they've only been able to get through 90% of a raid before shit hits the fan and people's moms become the target of verbal abuse, which leads to butthurt and empty raid rosters. <coughs> so now that I've been able to get into a fairly good raiding guild, yeah, since Wards of Draenor, and acquire good knowledge of fights and the gear to match, I like to join less progress. Oh no, don't like that sentence, mate. Do not like, disapprove. I now like to join less progressed guilds to give them a hand with clearing content. I need an Elitus Alarm GIF. <coughs> so you could say, I've been around the block a few times and have experienced a version of every kind of fight, from cesspool to couple guilds and even a druid only guild, with, <laughs> with the exception of a chamois because druids don't get lust. We're a druid only guild. What about Bill? Oh, we need bloodlust. Get some drums, you cheap pricks. It's all good. <clears throat> the first time I did this was in Warlords of Draenor, where I mained a resto druid. One memorable instance was where I helped a guild get heroic Archimonde. And the raid leader broke down into tears. Oh, Oh, you crying over heroic Don Archimonde? 
Oh. It was the best feeling I've had in years of playing WoW. If you like, you can play the sound. It's literally something saying yes, 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 and it starts to sob. <laughs> I don't know. What is this? I'm muted. Oh, it's a real thing. Okay. Do you have my audio? I think you do. <laughs> Let's listen to it together. Let's hope this isn't racist. <laughs> right. Oh, fucking no. Okay. Here we go. It's called Emotional Danny. Let's listen. That oh, sounds a bit sexual. Damn it, no edict. Bullshit. Where's the tears? He is crying. I can hear it. Seriously, Blizzard, fuck you. I'm done. Oh, he's crying. Bullshit. Blizzard. Oh. It's hard to tears. Who's that? Oh, 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 Mundi, he did it. <laughs> you crying in my TS, mate. You better grow some fucking nuts, mate. Uh, anyway, okay. <laughs> All right, so that was way back then. Oh, no, that's cute. That's cute. Anyway, let's go on. That was way back when, when our friend was joining around other guilds. His dreams came true. <laughs> You're a bunch of saki cunts, you guys. <laughs> His dreams came true. <laughs> Don't let your dreams be dreams, man. I was scrolling down the group finder tool, and I found a guild called, what were they called? The Elitist Mothers. Looking for a healer. I sent a request to join and linked the as head of the curve achievement. Even though, judging by the description of the group in the group finder, I would be the only person in the team with such an achievement. But whatever, I was there to help them get it. Alright? While waiting for the guild to find one more healer, I started chatting to the members. Bit of bants. Finding out what they were what they were having a hard time with and expecting the raiding team to try and get a feel for what I was about to walk into. There was a warrior with a 200 agility gem because, because he saw an old video of an agility warrior melting faces or something and wanted to replicate it in Legion. There was a warrior with a 200 agility gem because he saw an old video of an agility warrior melting faces and wanted to replicate it in Legion. Right. Okay. <laughs> the only time I can remember a warrior even considering agility was not even in vanilla. It gave crit in vanilla. But strength though. <laughs> we did wear strength agility gear. Anyway. But aside from that. There wasn't too many things that stood out. Some missing gems, missing enchants, but hey, normal raiding is basically LFR for guilds. It's a fair comment, I think that's fair to say. After waiting for what seemed like an age, though. Oh, back in agility in wrath? BC leather agi? I don't remember that. So now I was a tank, though. Did I use agi for dodge at one point? I think I did. The pro warriors used to gem strength agi in CBC. Something like that. That rings a bell. I think I used to do that. I think they were purple gems. <coughs> I think. I think. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. In BC, agi for dodge as a warrior. Yeah. Yeah. I remember. I remember gemming agi myself. Actually, I took it all back. Anyway. Didn't do that in Legion, though, right? I think we can all agree in Legion, the Warriors aren't gemming agility. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
After waiting what seemed like an age, let's get back in. Immersion. After waiting what seemed like an age to find a healer and some DPS, we were fucking ready to pull Scorper on. We're going in. The raid leader and the GM of the guild, Lyrica, told everyone the strat. Right. Strats. Which was mostly what I was used to. The only difference is instead of range spreading out, she insisted that everyone had to stack and only move when there was the focus blast. Alright. I didn't care much, as being a holy pally, I was standing in melee with the men. <laughs> We're getting into melee with the men. <coughs> One final ready check. Two ready checks. Scorper on normal. Are we ready? <sighs> the countdown appeared. It started from 30. Fucking hell. <laughs> <laughs> I just leave. I'm hearthstoning. <laughs> I can hearthstone, be summoned back, and still be ready to go. <coughs> I had a nap that fed the cat. When the timer hit five, Lyrica decided to start. On Discord, I said that was a super pro pull, Lyrica. <laughs> She said that I should show up because her initial it increases her initial DPS way more than everyone else. Look at the damage meter. <laughs> Science! I've checked it! If I pull first, my pull is way stronger than everyone else's. Right? Don't be dumb. Use your brains. <laughs> we continued the fight, but during the fight, people were getting thrown all over the place. Hit by focus blast and just generally making, you know, the usual. We killed the boss though with some solid heals by myself and an off tank that was not shit. I smashed the healing, but that was to be expected due to be the gear I had. Uh, especially compared to the monk. Scumbag. Scumbag. <clears throat> and the resto druid, Crown Royal. As the loot was being distributed, Lyrica asked, Anybody link recount, mate? Anybody link recount, though? I laughed over Discord and remembered what you had said in several videos. I'm pretty sure you have recount installed. To which she replied, I do, but it reset though. Wait, can anyone link the damage though? A window licking rogue fell for the ter the dirty trap and linked it in raid chat. Lyrica piped up and said, Oh, look at that though. Carrying the DPS. <laughs> what do you... <laughs> what do you think the DPS... Carry DPSs on Scorpion. What do you think? <laughs> Any guesses? I don't know if she was she a druid. Is she balanced? Let me check. Is she balanced? Oh, she's feral. Uh, oh no, she's not a druid. She's an elemental shaman. Scorpion. <laughs> this is the description of this GM. I shit you not. Basic bitch GM and raid leader who played an elemental shami. Her discord name was one sexy bitch, so I instantly knew what kind of person she is. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> she was the top with 550k. The second DPS was about 400k and so on. There was an audible groan, but I didn't notice who it was that piped up. <clears throat> overloading for days mate just fucking overloading all over this some bitch the druid scumbag had mentioned that he had no mana for half of the fight i didn't pay much attention to it as a druid without mana was nothing new oh fucking hot shots we cleared the trash up to chrono everyone died twice we've all been there <laughs> we've all died on the chrono trash that's why we all double lust it <clears throat> But I got to cheese big HPS, which made me grin like a priest when the Wiggles come to town. We killed Chrono without too many issues, and again, again, Scumbag complained that he had no mana, and that I was killing his healing. <clears throat> to Triliax then. 
I had to run. <laughs> I had to run to Africa and back to get the cakes, which the rage were neglecting because, as replied on Discord, moving is a DPS loss. How can you argue? Eh? Who do you think you are? Coming in here? Of course I'm not going to pick up that cake there. Moving, mate, loses deeps. And I'm... <laughs> Half the raid died, but Trilliax is down, boys, and we're pushing on through. <clears throat> Most of the raid died due to running with the lasers. <laughs> and I noticed, I noticed that Scumbag had over 80% mana remaining and had barely registered on the meters. We continued up the stairs, killed the trash up to Spellblade, but L Lyrica, Lyrica and Scumbag were still stood at Trilliax's corpse. There they stood, motionless. I thought they'd gone AFK. I was still dis distilling loot. But as soon as we got near to Spellblade, <laughs> Lyrica spoke up on Discord. She went off at Crown Royal, the monks, saying he, she, Apache attack helicopter, whatever, was fucking shit. Low on the healing meters. Ain't new mechanics. And they should be paying for this carry. Which I thought it was gold because the whole guild didn't seem to know what about mechanics at all. I stood up for Crown Royal. I said there isn't much to heal and he had 110% overheals and was lowest on damage taken. Whereas Scumbag though did nothing had taken almost as much damage as the tanks. Before I could finish though they kicked Crown Royal before I could finish the sentence. Removed though. Rip Crown Royal. He knew his Trilliax mechanics, and for that we thank him. We think of him today, dodging Annihilation. His revivals were crisp. But Spellblade will not die this day. Not today. It was at this point that Scumbag also mentioned over Discord that I was in fact a shithouse. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. You are a shit house. <laughs> Just want to let you know that. That I was heal sniping, which was making him waste mana and go oom early in the fight. And that I was a terrible person for making him feel like a bad healer and humiliating him in front of the guild. I'm Shaman. Uh, what are you playing? Are you playing a druid as well? I can't remember. <laughs> Somebody's playing a druid, is it you? <coughs> Is that a man a druid? Are you being sniped by rejuvenation? <laughs> That's what I'm confused about. <laughs> I'm confused. Wasn't that a man playing a druid? I'm really sure. I'm really sure he's playing a druid. Fucking sniped, man. Them swift men's though. Fucking. Oh, holy pala. Ooh, holy pala. That light of dawn though. Fucking sniperunu. Sniperugu. Ah, that holy shock. Whole raid. Full health. Bastard. I was lost for words, preacher. I didn't know where to start. Do I say he's an idiot? Do I explain how other people's healing doesn't affect his mana? Or do, <laughs> or do I just go in all caps rage and let him know how fat his mother is and that I was still fucking her so I can confirm that she is still a big fat planet? I was about to just send him to your channel. Oh, thanks. 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 <laughs> send him my way. <coughs> so he could get good before I could... Before... But before I could even mention that, Lyrica backed him up, saying that if I healed half as well as she did deeps, then we wouldn't have even seen anybody die. Oh, oh shit! If you could drop 550 on Scott normal, then you know what the fuck was up, dude. <clears throat> I interrupted her and said, do you know your logs show your damage as being the bottom top 10% for the last three bosses. Elitist wrecked! Ch -ch <laughs> Fucking shotgun, baby! Shotgun came in strong! See the way we've backed it up? Logs are elitist because look at this! He used it in an elitist way. Elitist logs came in strong and fucking burned her. If I said if anyone in my guild would do your damage, they wouldn't even be allowed to raid with our fucking Casuals. Discord exploded into laughter. 
and people saying she should apply water to her burned vag. <laughs> one by one, I saw the guild's name being removed from the members of the raid. <laughs> Followed by more laughter and people calling her a loser. <clears throat> there are more words that would extend Ghosty's already impressive vocabulary. Wow. I was kicked from the group, banned from their Discord. I received walls and walls of pink text from Lyrica. I didn't read it, I just replied with lol K. Only to see that sweet yellow text confirming that she had nothing more to say. This concludes my little drama story. Thanks for reading it. I still join smaller guilds every other week, depending on my schedule with real life and guild events. I've raided with nightmare guilds, but I've also met a whole bunch of friendly people that outweighs the shitters. I recommend high level raiders helping out smaller guilds from time to time. You know, for the bants. But yes, currently writing up another longing multi-part story that you can look forward to. Oh, and hurry up and come to Sydney so you and Ghosty can have a beer with all of us. Yeah, yeah. All right, that was cool. <laughs> that was cool. All right. Um, we've got a story here written by a lovely lady that was written in a text notepad. And for that, you, I am revoking your female status. Uh. <laughs> ah, where you good? <coughs> All right, we'll do the names as we go through. No, no PDF. All the girls write in PDF and with lovely pink formatting and pictures and all sorts of good shit. This lady now says no. She says no. You'll have it in Notepad or your GTFO, son. Go away, Al. Go away. Please go away. You're killing my soul, Al. There we go. Okay. We're good. All right. Oh, shit. Did I not get the whole story? No, I didn't. Okay. Oh, this story's really long. We might be okay. Maybe... We should be fine. We should be fine. It's a really long one, though. All right. Okay. <coughs> Here we go. Okay, we've got the cast. We've got the cast. All right. So we've got our lovely lady. We have her husband, Vrogoth. Yeah. Vrogoth. Hubby. Uh, the GM. Which was that? We have a healer, Arika. We have... Oh, there's loads of names here. Holy shit. Arika. Uh, Mythic Knight. Alright, and some smaller parts that we'll bring in from the live chat as we go through it. So that'll do for now. Alright then. <clears throat> Greetings, Preach, Ghosty, and the audience. Alright. I began my WoW career in the mid-burning crusade, starting off as a hunter. Guns, pets, bipedal bovines, it was magical. Until I discovered that everyone hates hunters, and Torin gets stuck on all the doors. As soon as I could, I re-rolled to a Blood Elf Paladin. Alright. Girl confirmed. I leveled as holy. <laughs> yes, it took a long time, but I did find a raiding guild rather quickly. Ooh. At the time, my hubby was also playing Vrogoth. He too started as a hunter and changed to a paladin. And yes, he also leveled as holy. At Cat, we both tried tanking. He, rolled, he really wanted to be a shockadin. <coughs> but... <laughs> is this you? Shockadin boy. Uh, he really wanted to be a shockadin. But since those shenanigans just weren't going to cut it with other players, he tanked and I healed. After trying to raid in a few bad Kara guilds during the Burning Crusade, we wound up in a new guild formed by players we had met and quested with often while leveling in the wonderful era of server individuality. Ah, We were promoted to officer since we knew the GM and other officers so long 
and we were willing to help run the guild. As a side note for the chat, the members didn't mind because we had helped so many of them with their mount quests. For some fucking reason, half the DPS were warlocks, including two of our friends. Our guild, of course, was terrible. Just the worst. Just the worst. But we were all friends, so it was fine. We later both leveled our hunters to cap as well, since Pally's suck dick at doing dailies and hunters were great at it we raided kara <laughs> the rest of the week we took a break then we came back in wrath our internet and computers were dog shit and couldn't handle dalaran we eventually came back proper near the end of wrath heard how our guild had struggled through the expansion after we left we decided to merge guilds in kata this was of course an enormous waste of time yes it was the other girls thought they were better Despite having the same progress as us. <laughs> I left the weak raids opened in Kata. Sadly, our guild, and for that matter, the entire horde side of our small server, left en masse when the fateful ghost crawler watercool was posted about dungeons being hard. Really? Wow. You see, it was a super casual server. No, no. Not a super casual guild. The whole server is casual as fuck, right? Barely even logging in. Barely even logging in. Not even fucking playing. Server first kills generally only happened the next expansion. Wow. And there were only two guilds doing what one would call progression. <laughs> on the Horde side, one on the Horde side and one on the Alliance. Lich King Heroic died the first time the week before the Dragon Soul released. Our little guild struggled so hard when people began to leave affronted at ghost crawlers unfeeling words i wound up spending most of my my wow time wow time picking flowers and battling pets even though i don't really like pet battles i just wanted to collect them my husband and i decided to re-roll new alts something we did fairly often but we chose to try some alliance characters for a change of pace. And for some reason we decided to do it on a teeny tiny PvP server called Smolderthorn. Smolderthorn. Just to see what a truly abandoned server feels like. Anyone from anyone from Smolderthorn? Anyone? Anyone Smolderthorn? <laughs> anyone? <laughs> Smolderthorn. <laughs> I don't have <laughs> We leveled, me a Resto Druid, not my first, and he a mage. Both night elves, of course. Then, <laughs> then of course, there wasn't anything to do. We decided to try PvP. We did twos, BGs. Oh shit, Resto Druid, mage? Sick. <laughs> we were really bad, but it was random, so oh well. We decided that this was really boring and that we should transfer these characters to the ally side of our home server. The ally side was still doing okay. Sure, it wasn't any Area 52 or Storm Rage, but it was better than poor old Smolderthorn. Did they delete that realm? Is it that bad? Holy shit. By this time, the Firelands had opened and I saw someone practically begging in trade for a healer. I had been avoiding most group activities since my Horde Guild had broken up and all the toxicity from Cata Fivemans. I didn't even really know what break down and say. I'm in PvP gear and I haven't raided since Nax, but I'll come if you want. Boom. Invite. I came. I healed. We went through their farm and then arrived at Major Domo. This was progress for them. And we killed it. It was at the end of the raid time and I was promptly asked to join their guild. I was still shy of group content. I said, maybe... They said, will you at least come to our next raid? And I agreed. The next night we worked on Ragnaros for a while. And after that, I agreed that I would join. And I asked if my husband, Vrogoth's mage, could join as well. They said yes. And they had an opening on Team 2. Yes. Raid Team 2 was just, <laughs> was just starting. It was supported by alts of Team 1. The GM was quick to say, though, that this was only temporary. Nobody was ever going to be allowed to raid on both teams once it was set. Now, Vrogoth, my husband, who I love very much, was bad at his mage. 
Peacock. <laughs> he was very, very bad at his mage. The leader of team two also played a mage, and he worked very, very hard to help my husband improve. Eventually, my husband was okay at mage. <laughs> <laughs> congratulations you're now okay at mage that's fantastic team two still needed more people though mains from team one didn't really want to help team two anymore because team two had people like my husband on it <laughs> he's saying it in a way like it's so understandable <laughs> <laughs> so I asked that if I transferred my hunter from Horde, would uh, that allow to replace somebody uh, from Team 1 into Team 2? And they agreed. By now, Team 1 had killed Raggy and was wiping and wiping to Rage Face. That noble creature really screwed up our raid. I was very happy raiding on both my druid and my hunter. I was quickly doing the top deeps. My druid sadly would never be top heals because Team 1 had a priest who was a goddess. It's what you get for playing the wrong class. If you was playing a priest, you would be the goddess. You see how this works? It's simple science at this point, girls. Can we get a fucking... Can you get this shit sorted? No matter how good you are, girls, you will always be better on a priest. It's just science. I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. It's nothing to do with me. It's just the way the game works. And there's no point in blaming me about it. Let's go. She was X hardcore. I didn't understand what she was doing in this shitty guild on a shitty server, but there she was. She was generally quiet, but we whispered a lot and became friends. Her name was Arika. Mm. Mm. I also find myself going very close to the tank on team two. He was a good tank. We also did five months together a lot. His name was Mythic Knight. Shit, Gaston like a motherfucker. The GM pro <coughs> The Dragon Soul opened. I'd been in the guild for about three months at this point, and the GM promptly lost his fucking mind and believed that our casual guild didn't that didn't even get halfway through heroic firelands was now going to become hard fucking core. I should know at this point that there were three ladies on team one. Myself Arika and a mage who was the wife or girlfriend of one of the tanks. I should also note that both teams had one good tank and one that was okay. Team 2 also had a healer who was frankly just a liability. But he was a great guy and we loved him so we didn't care. Both teams head in. Both teams do just fine up to Hagara. Here team 1 began to have a little problem though. We separated our healers around the sections. My section was crisp. Arika's section was baller. Our third healer was the <laughs> was the GM who played a holy paladin. Draza was not crisp. He couldn't handle ice walls. He kept standing in the ice, either on the floor or the walls. One way or the other, he could not survive. Now, I could include a, radic a racially insensitive joke here, but would probably keep my story from being read. Okay. Team 1's progress ground to a halt. Team 2, however, pushed on. We had some trouble with the ball boss because our second tank couldn't aim. We worked out a strategy where we would have to aim the ball and it was all good. Our healers, despite one always being drunk as shit, could at least survive the ice phase. The dragon trash kicked our ass for a bit, but once we got the actual boss, we killed him. And then we began the boat. Now at this point, our GM, Draza, is pissed. His team one is supposed to be the flagship of the guild after all. Eventually, both teams did finish normal Dragon Soul and moved on to Heroic. But team two continued to at least keep up and sometimes push ahead of team one. Draza started poaching team two players. <laughs> How is it possible, he would ask? And most of the team relayed in whispers to each other. Because you're fucking shit, Draza. But we said nothing to him. He decided it was time for changes. This include making Tuesdays 25 man days. Where we, he would mash team one and team two together. Along with some socials from the guild. 
and start doing 25 man now most of the guild fucking hated this we were 10 man raiders by god and we did not want 25 it was too many people and too much to manage why should we carry socials through normal when we could just do it clearly on our own why Tuesday's 25s would take place at a different time that either team trying to fit the needs of all and not actually working for anyone. And for me, well, my computer is still dog shit. And while 10s were fine, 25 were more than my PC could handle. My FPS was single fucking digits. It was not fun. It also meant that I was no longer doing farm on both my characters, but only my druid. And on this time, he invited a new player to the guild. She, on a druid, was supposed to be a raider for team two. She was called Emma. He also invited one of his IRL friends. A total arsehole. And some more hunters. One who was just okay and another that was a creep. Almost immediately, Emma pissed off all the other women in the guild by being very flirty with men. Outrageous. Outrageous. <coughs> the other women and I all preferred to get into raid on merit and not because we've got boobs. But Emma bragged about having three kids by three different men <laughs> that she had raided with in former expansions. <clears throat> she was freshly divorced and had server transfer because she thought her ex hub might stalk her right the creep one nut one nut the creep immediately <laughs> started smarming up to all the other girls asking each of us to go into private vent channels or to help him in some way with his rotation or gear all the rest of us girls were on to him immediately and told him no Eventually, each of us telling Dra Drazza that this dude, one nut, is a fucking creep and he needs to go. <laughs> Emma, though, being the slut that she was, <laughs> she would go into the private ch vent channels with one nut. But then she freaked out when he went full creep on her. One nut was kicked from the guild and she changed all her characters' names with Blizzard's assistance and she put in tickets about how he was harassing her. Despite the fact that she willingly went to Creeper Town with him. She got a lot of sympathy from the other men about this harassment that she was getting. Including one of the tanks from Team 2. Who despite being married. Said that they could, IR they could date in game. And that was allowed. Alright. <laughs> and that that was allowed. This eventually escalated him saying that all the women in the guild had sent him nudes. And that she should too. <laughs> he wanted to rename team 2 sausage fest because if they would just get rid of him it would be an all male guild <laughs> it's the rules then it's the rules it's the rules it's very good <clears throat> now since he had recruited so many people at once the gm decided that it was time for a roster shake-up we need a roster shake-up he wanted half of Team 1 and half of Team 2 to merge. And since the tank from Team 2 and Emma was so cosy, and you know that since she's a, such an important new member, I roll. I don't need to point something out, but... I'm going to point it out. What? This. Oh, I know, I know. Yeah, no. <laughs> Nobody was on board with this changing of the rosters from Team 1 and Team 2, other than the GM. Nobody gave two shits about him wanting to start another Team 3 that would be for alts. The first raid with our new SWAT rosters came. I don't even remember whether it went well or not because I was too busy in whispers. It was also noted that he had chosen to sit all the girls from Team 1. He had taken all the Team 2 healers who were men. Everyone was confused. Arika and I were good healers. The mage was decent. Instead, he'd taken a drunk priest from Team 2. 
The new Team 2's raid came around and they were shot a healer as someone had an MIA. I said I'd take my druid since Team 1 didn't use it this week and we had plenty of deeps. For some reason that will never make sense to me. Draza completely freaked out. Apparently he decided that it was only, you were only allowed to raid on one character. And said nobody is allowed to raid in other teams. I told him Draza. I've been raiding for four months with both teams. Nobody cares. Nobody was sitting out. In fact, if I didn't go, Team 2 was not going to raid at all since they didn't want to pug a healer in Heroic. The good Team 2 tank, my friend, stood up to him, saying he was not going to halt Team 2's progress for his own guild over some weird moral stance that didn't even make sense. Draza said the fateful words. If you enter the raid with that druid, I'm disbanding this whole guild. We went. We raided. He didn't kick us. But he said he was leaving the guild. He said our disloyalty to what he was trying to create was more than enough. It was over. And that our treachery will never be forgotten. We left the guild. We whispered him, why don't you come back? But he said no. He said we couldn't be trusted. And that he was sure all the girls were sending nudes to other members of the guild and none to him. <laughs> no nudes. He's not getting any boobies. Treachery. Treacherous women. Conniving. Why does all these guys get boobs? And no one else gets boobs. I give you more boobs if you want boobs. Nah, it's okay. <laughs> I saw him in trade chat saying I left guild. But as far as I know, he never found a guild again. That's really sad. Oh, do you feel bad? Because he didn't get nudes? Or because of what? Well, you wouldn't send nudes, would you? Well, that's that pretty normal up. now. It's pretty normal to send nudes. Yeah, but not if you want to get that revenge porn and stuff. It's illegal now. You've got to jail for revenge porn. Yeah, I know, but someone would do it. Yeah, they still do it, though. Ladies and gents, I'm 10 minutes over time. My wife's about to cut my balls off because we're super late to pick up the boys. Uh, but uh, trust me, yeah, if you're a GM out there and the girls aren't sending you nudes, they probably are to everyone else. That's something you should be aware of. Is that really what they do? What? Like to get extra what? Gold? How many people in the chat have seen nudes of a girl in their guild? Oh, I know a girl that probably would do it. Oh, I know two. There you go. Yeah, it's quite normal these days. Quite normal to get the old nudie nudes. But what benefit is it to the girl? Uh, maybe she gets some pom. I have, I have, back in the day. Yep, I have. There you go. Yeah, but what benefit is it? Uh, I knew a girl who very quickly sent news to the GM and got an officer spot and then got all the stuff she wanted in the game. And she, you don't even have to bang them because they're on the other side of the what world. Is the game? Emma, epics. For a shot of boobs, three epics? I mean, Ooh. I'm not even going to joke, but. I'd have to want something in real life, like quantifiable, for a picture of my boobs. For some of us, item level's more important than whatever shit you're doing out really? outside. What really? You yeah, what's going on out there? Horses and shit. A saddle. Have you got cutting edge, though? You've got a saddle, right? Mm -hmm. And that's great. Do you have cutting edge? What do you mean? <laughs> my point. Ladies and gents, web show is tomorrow. I will see you then. We have to go. It is Peace a team. Game. It's just a game. Girls, don't go sending pictures of your boobs <laughs> or vaginas or anything else that you might have. Or if you do send your vagina, don't shave it. Scare the shit out of him. Don't send it to Mike. Do you get nudes? No.